Media Awards. And I wonder why it is that we're protesting outside the US Embassy this evening. Well, it's not because we want to show one single iota of support for Bashar al-Assad, the butcher who hasn't shrank from one single outrage against his own country. And it's not because we think that American missiles and bombs are somehow more deadly or more dangerous than the missiles and bombs of other nations. And it's also not because, like some, we're ready to give Russia or Iran a green light to go on murdering more Syrians in places like Idlib. And finally, it's certainly not because we somehow think that Americans bombing empty chemical weapons facilities could be worse than all their other bombings, which have led to thousands upon thousands of deaths of Syrian civilians and Syrian people since 2014, with the full benediction of two different American presidents. So none of those, I think, are the reasons that we're here tonight. And I think I can speak for everyone here in saying that we think of ourselves and we are progressives. We're internationalists. We stand firmly against foreign interventions and imperial wars. So we stand against, we stand against the intervention of any power whether that's the US, whether it's Russia, or whether it's Iran, that dares to rob Syrian and other Middle Eastern people of their capacity to forge their own future. And of course, as I've already suggested, we stand unconditionally against Assad and his slaughtering. There can be no just resolution in Syria while the butcher of Damascus stays in power. I think that couldn't be clearer. Calling for an end to the war while waving an Assadist flag, as some people do, is to show contempt for the most basic demands of peace. So at the moment we're standing, of course, outside the US consulate. But we should also, I think, go to the Iranian consulate in Canberra, the Iranian embassy. We should also go to the Russian consulate in Sydney, because we have to also protest against the swathes of death and suffering that those countries have cut through the martyred people of Syria for too many years by far now. But as people who live in Australia, as people who live in the West, I think it's fair to say that we have a particular obligation against, to protest against our own government and against our own government's allies. It's not, I think, that we automatically just glibly reel off the old mantra that the real enemy is at home. Our real enemies are all those visiting death and destruction and suffering on ordinary civilians in Syria, whatever flag they do it under, whether that's the US flag, whether it's the Russian flag, whether it's someone else's. But protest, surely, is most effective when it's against our own government and its allies. And I'd like it, and I'm sure we all here would like it, if this country had an anti-war movement that was large and powerful enough to mount interventions outside the Russian, em in the Russian consulate in Sydney and the Iranian embassy in Canberra. But that movement doesn't yet exist, and maybe the best way to build it the best way to create such a strong and deep and powerful movement is to protest against the government that the people around us feel as though they have some responsibility for. Because if we want all of these people who are seeing our protest here today, if we want them to join us to protest against Russia and against Iran as well as against the US, then we have to show that we're not afraid to take an unambiguous stand against our own government and that we're resolute in opposing our government's war and our government's allies' dirty, murderous wars. So we're here, I think, to condemn the cold-blooded cynicism of Trump, Macron and May. They throw up their hands in horror at the use of chemical weapons as though their own nuclear arsenals don't even exist. They profess 
their humanitarian commitment as they serenely continue pumping the world full of conventional weapons. And those weapons are going to do far more damage than, and far more violence to ordinary people than the horrifying nerve agents that Assad has deployed in Syria, unspeakable and criminal though those nerve agents are. You know, by flattening some empty chemical weapons labs, Trump and his, his lieutenants presume to remind the world about how war should be waged properly. How you wage war if you're a leader who maims and murders civilians in only the most civilised ways. And we know, don't we? We know what the civilised Western art of war amounts to. It amounts to the wholesale destruction of Iraq and Afghanistan, as previous speakers have so eloquently detailed for us. It means the infernal chaos that we're currently looking at in Libya. It means the millions upon millions of refugees and internally displaced people. It's a political and human tragedy of mind-boggling proportions, brought to us courtesy of Trump and of John Bolton and all the other so sociopaths of Washington, and supported by the just contemptible Me Tooism squeaked out by the likes of Turnbull at the very moment that he does everything in his power to lock refugees out of Australia and persecute them on the island camps in which he's keeping them in prison. So I'm almost done, but before I end up, I just want to say that if countries like the US and Australia are really serious about their duty to protect, then they'd stop spending taxpayer dollars on warplanes and bombs. Turnbull would abandon his sad and contemptible ambition to shoot Australia into the top of the league tables of arms exporting countries. They'd stop supercharging their domestic weapons industries and they'd actually start committing to serious refugee and humanitarian aid so that people fleeing the war in Syria and all the wars elsewhere around the world can actually be safe. And you know, we shouldn't fool ourselves. There are no easy answers in Syria. Maybe there are no good answers at the moment either. But one thing is certain. Bombs will not lead to any kind of peace. So when our governments and our allies' governments commit planes to this conflict, we have no choice but to protest and to protest loudly. Western bombs aren't just a disaster for Syria, of course. By endorsing the use of force and the use of violence as a first resort, they drag every one of us further and further away from a world in which peace might be a real possibility. And that's not just in Syria, it's in Yemen, it's in the Koreas, it's in the South China Sea, and it's the same in Australia itself. Troops out of Syria, no more bombs, no more raids, Russia out, US out, Iran out, peace now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nick, powerful words.